Hello and welcome to the I, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. More than 251 crore rupees has been credited to Nagaland farmers since the inception of PM Kisan scheme. Hundreds of bogus farmers detected. The Dimapur police have arrested a man from Uttar Pradesh for cheating Naglin Cooperative Bank of 2 crore rupees. The Chakasang Women Welfare Society has denounced an event called the Mora 2021 by Ritika Mittal, accusing her of using Chakasang textile without consent and correct accreditation. Now for the news in details. The central government transferred the ninth installment of the PM Kisan scheme to the accounts of over 12 crore farmers on Monday. The PM Kisan scheme or Pradhan Mantri Kisan Saman Nidhi scheme provides financial benefit of rupees 6,000 to eligible farmer families every year. Fully backed by the central government, PM Kisan scheme aims to help small and medium category farmers by funding them in three installments every year. The benefit is transferred directly into the bank accounts of the beneficiaries in three equal installments of rupees 2,000. The first installment is generally between December 1st and March 31st. The second installment is between April 1st and July 31st. The third installment comes in between August 1st and November 30th. Under the scheme, there are around 12.11 crore farmers across India who are registered. Around 9.75 crore farmers are the beneficiaries of the PM Kisan scheme. With the ninth installment, the government released about Rs 19,500 crore in funds. There are certain limitations to the scheme's criteria that limit which farmers can and cannot receive the funds. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday transferred over Rs 19,500 crore to more than 9.75 crore farmer families as he released a nine installment under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Saman Nidhi or PM Kisan scheme. Here in Nagaland, 251 crore, 74 lakh and 82,000 rupees have been transferred directly into the individual accounts of 2 lakh and 82 farmers since 2019 under the PM Kisan scheme as on July 31st, 2021. However, the Department of Agriculture, Government of Nagaland has verified few districts to have non-eligible beneficiaries. The Agriculture Production Commissioner KK Tosema informed Hornbill TV that 524 non-eligible beneficiaries have been have benefited from the scheme amounting to the tune of rupees 45 lakhs in the districts of Dimapur and Woka alone. Asserting that the department will not allow ineligible beneficiaries to benefit from the scheme, which is meant solely for genuine farmers, Sema informed that in coordination with the central government, exercises are being conducted to identify the non-eligible beneficiaries in other districts of the state. He further asserted that in any government, if any government employee is found to be beneficiary of the scheme, befitting action will be taken against those individuals. We cannot allow ineligible beneficiary to enjoy. So in, co in co coordination with the central government, the department has verified few districts. So initially, Dimapur and Waka, we have uh, verified and uh, we found 524 non-eligible beneficiaries uh, availing the scheme amounting to 45 lakhs. So we have directed uh, those uh, districts to identify those people and we are also given direction to all other districts to follow the same verification. Farmer Kurganabi, Jesu Town, Higanabi, Tajibo. So that they tell us so slowly we are going to see. We will see when we cross the bridge. No? Ito, ito they tell Lobola and they should surrender themselves now because we are not going to, you know, give up actually officers 
has been directed to go on war footing to detect uh, those uh, irregularities. We will not allow those focus farmers to injure on behalf of farmers. That we cannot do. So that's why we are doing, uh, in collaboration with the uh, central government, we are also doing a little bit of exercise. Right? In other local news, the Chakasang Women Welfare Society or the CWWS has denounced an event called the Mora 2021 by Ritika Mittal accusing her of using Chakasang textile without consent and correct accreditation. The society issued a press release on August 9 declaring that Ritika Mittal or any individual representing Mora will not be allowed to enter Peak District. The organization denounced the launch of Mora 2021 by Ritika Mittal, stating that in spite of being served a notice and another warning, she has gone ahead with the Mora collection, which uses our textile without consent and correct accreditation. She was informed to stop using Kuzami in her credits because Kuzami refers to 14 Kuza speaking villages among the Chakasangs in Nagaland, the group stated. She worked only with Lasumi and Zapami villages, but refused to name the two villages and acknowledge NEN, Mora's facilitating partner, the press release stated. She refused to comply with the terms and conditions offered by the Chakasang Apex Frontal Organizations and instead challenged the community and invited them to visit her in Punjab, the society alleged. The organization has warned Mora to immediately stop using any of the community textiles, traditional designs and motifs failing which appropriate measures will be taken. Requesting the public to be mindful of the alleged unethical practices that have been indulged in the Mora 2021 launch, the society urged the wisdom of the consumer to either appreciate or condemn such practices. The Chakasang community declared that Ritika Mittal or any individual representing Mora will not be allowed to enter Peck district, the society stated in its press release. The Dimapa police have arrested one person, namely Gyanendra Singh, who is 26 years old, from Gonda District, Uttar Pradesh, on criminal charges of defrauding the Nagaland Cooperative Bank Dimapur to the tune of Rs 2 crore. The arrest followed a complaint by the NCP Dimapur that during 2020 to 21, unknown people had brought a huge financial loss of Rs 2 crores to the bank by raising falsified charge back claims on ATM transactions through multiple ATM cards of various banks. During the investigation supervised by ACPC division, it was revealed through the arrested individual that personal bank accounts would firstly be opened in various banks of the country, especially in Chandigarh and Uttar Pradesh, after which physical travels would be made to Dimapur to withdraw cash from the cooperative bank ATM. On successful withdrawal of the cash, the individual would travel back to other states and make false chargebacks from the parent bank branch on the concocted claim that during the ATM withdrawal process, the amount was debited from his account even though the ATM could not dispense the required cash. Moreover, six ATM cards of Punjab National Bank, an SBI, Aadhaar card and a flight ticket was also seized. In this connection, a case has already been registered in West Police Station, Dimapur. In other news, with the help of Uttar Pradesh Police, the Noklak District Police have brought two accused persons from UP to Noklak on charges of duping a person to an amount in excess of 34 lakh rupees. According to updates on August 9th, Monday, the two persons are Dheeraj Pandey, 22 years of Pratap Ghar in UP and Rahul Pandey, 20 years from Allahabad. The two accused were brought to Noklak in connection with fraud in which the accused allegedly duped a person by posing as an SBI bank manager to an amount in excess of Rs 34 lakh. The two arrested persons were produced before the court of Dwensang on August 7th and remanded to police custody for interrogation. During interrogation, the update stated, it is learned that the modus operandi of the gangs that they would call victims or send bulk messages posing as bank managers or treasury officers and then trick victims into downloading software applications such as Team Viewer, AnyDesk, etc., through which they take control of the victims' phones. Thereafter, they would themselves, as a third party, hack into the accounts of the victims or directly withdraw amounts, which is in turn sent to different fake accounts in smaller amounts via apps like Google Pay, Sahi Pay, Pay Nearby, Go Payment, Spice Money, etc., the update stated. They used the Pay Nearby app to do the fraud, the update stated. 
It is also learned that the members of the gang possess multiple fake accounts in payment apps as well as fake bank accounts through which they transfer money from one account to another. Updates said that the gang mostly operate from UP, West Bengal and Jamtara, Jharkhand. Investigation is going on to arrest other gang members also, it is informed. The OUR Students Conference or AKM has sounded a clarion to all the people of the OUR territories to be prepared to safeguard their ancestral lands. The AKM has expressed deep concern over the issues arising at the border including Nagaland and other northeastern states with Assam. Addressing a press conference on August 9 at the AKM's office, leaders of the AKM stated that the organization has been observing the border issue silently over the years and has opined that the issue has not been addressed sincerely by both the sides. It called upon the Nagaland government to look beyond the four walls of state politics as the Assam side can be seen accusing Nagaland of encroachment on many occasions. For instance, it is a known fact that AKM has its own reserve forest in the ancestral land of the Ao, Nagas and not as per the views of the Assam media. The AKM said that it will not compromise an inch of the land since the blood and tears of their forefathers and their toil are still not forgotten or lost. Therefore, the AKM gives a call to all the citizens of the Ao territories to be prepared in safeguarding their ancestral land. In view of the onset of monsoon season and with the probability of flash floods and rising water levels in the rivers and streams across Dimapur district due to heavy rainfall, the Deputy Commissioner, who is also the Chairman of District Disaster Management Authority, Dimapur, Rajay Sondara Rajan, has requested the general public to refrain from going to the riverside for fishing, picnic or any water-related activities. In this regard, all the villages along the river banks and the concerned village councils are requested to prohibit the aforementioned activities till the end of this monsoon season. This notice is for strict compliance to all concerned. The Kifre District Legal Services Authority organized a legal awareness program on the 7th of August at Pungro Town advocating rights and the various legal services that are available to the people. A statement from the district's legal services on August 9 gave updates about the event. During the event, the keynote address was given by N. Long Shitang Izang, Member Secretary of the Nagaland State Legal Services Authority. The update said, He urged that the purpose of the legal services is to make justice available to all, and the services play a very decisive role acting as a bridge between the needy and the poor and the courts. Also, Abhinav Shivam, the additional Deputy Commissioner of Pungro encouraged the people of the town to come forward and avail the benefits of legal rights and services, the update stated. A legal service member, Michael I, spoke on the topics of rights of arrested persons and spoke of examination of arrested person by a medical practitioner at the request to the arrested person, informing the arrested person about the ground of arrest and of the right to bail. Whenever the search of a female person is necessary, the search should be made by another female with strict regard to ensuring decency and modesty. A discourse on the Nagaland Village and Tribal Council Act was delivered by Bindangwati Sangtam, retainer lawyer of the Kifri DLSA, who highlighted the functions of the Nagaland Village Council Act, powers and duties, power to remove members, limitations of tenure, village council members to look after the developmental schemes, etc. The update stated, a legal aid clinic was inaugurated by N. Long Shidong Izung, Member Secretary Nagaland State Legal Services Authority, the update stated. As part of the process of making subzonal offices functional in the Northeast State Capitals, the Enforcement Directorate's new subzonal office in Shillong will start functioning from Wednesday. This office will be functioning under the Guwahati Zone Office 2 and it shall be headed by a Deputy Director having jurisdiction over the state of Meghalaya. The office will start functioning in Shillong with effect from August 11th, the ED said in a statement, adding that the agency is in the process of making sub-zone offices functional in all the remaining state capitals of the northeastern states in this financial year. The establishment of the Shillong sub-zonal office shall in turn significantly improve attachment and confiscation of proceeds of crime under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. 
It will also assist or support the police and other state or central law enforcement agencies in the state of Manipur to prevent the transfer of funds across borders, otherwise then through banking channels and thereby further improve overall law enforcement. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma on Monday met Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the national capital to discuss the assam Mizoram border issue. Earlier, the Assam Chief Minister, accompanied by BJP MPs from Assam, also met Union Home Minister Amit Shah over the border dispute with the neighboring state Mizoram. The Chief Minister will meet Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia later today. However, Assam and Mizoram in a joint statement agreed to take forward the center's initiative of letting neutral forces patrol the disputed areas of the interstate border for maintaining peace. Earlier in August, Mizoram Governor Dr. Hari Babu Kambam Party met Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Home Minister Amit Shah to discuss the current border situation and how to defuse the tensions between the two states. It is an unfortunate incident and the Union Home Minister Amit Shah is trying to defuse the situation and find a solution, the governor told ANI. Both the CMs reiterated that peace will be restored, the governor said. On July 26, the border dispute between the two states escalated and a fierce gun battle between the forces of the two states resulted in the death of six Assam police personnel and one civilian. At least 50 people were injured in the incident. India has won its biggest ever med medal haul at the Tokyo Olympics with seven medals. The success of Indians at the Olympics has presented brands with the perfect op opportunity for moment marketing. Some of the top brands are now being accused of taking advantage of these highs for Indian athletes for visibility and traction. According to the information available, double Olympic medalist PV Sindhu will be sending notices to 15 companies for using her name and pictures in advertisements without her consent. According to Baseline Ventures, the sports marketing firm that represents PV Sindhu's commercial interests, Sindhu is very upset about the way brands and advertisers have seized this opportunity leveraging her reach and achievement at the Olympics. The firm has declared that they will be serving notices to 15 brands in this respect. The brands to whom notices will be served include Happy Dent, Pan Bahar, Eureka Forbes, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, Vodafone Idea, MG Motor, UCO Bank, PNB, SBI, Kotak Mahindra Bank, Fino Payments Bank, Bank of Maharashtra, Indian Bank, Wipro Lighting. A marketing approach in which brands become part of a conversation or trend and also pass off a link with celebrities to gain traction. A recent example is ads and posts that are part of the online praise. For PV Sindhu, the list of brands mentioned above had taken to social media to congratulate Sindhu for her bronze win at the Games and had used her name and pictures along with the company logo in the post. The police in Punjab claim to have busted a terror module and recovered ammunition, including improvised explosive devices, fitted in tiffin boxes and hand grenades from a village near the international border. Punjab Police Chief Dinkar Gupta said the cops in the state are working with central agencies on the case. The authorities believe the IEDs and grenades were delivered through drones from across the border, Gupta said. These are highly sophisticated and remote control devices activated through batteries, Gupta said. He, however, refused to name the target. The IEDs were found in Dalaki village on Sunday. Gupta did not name any terror group in Monday's press conference, but said that the police are aware of who is doing what, adding that a major terror beat has been foiled. The authorities are working with central agencies like the NIA and BSF, added Gupta. The Supreme Court on Monday issued notice to the center seeking response on disclosure of data regarding clinical trials of COVID-19 vaccines and also on post-vaccination as the petitioner claims that it is mandatory for the central government to publish these data as per the international medical norms. The court is issuing a notice and it will wait for their response. A two-judge bench of the Apex Court, headed by Justice L. Nageswara Rao and also comprising Justice Aniruddha Bose, said today, Let them come with the reply and the court will hear the matter after that, it said. 
the court will hear the issue which the petitioner has raised, the bench said. The petition was filed by Dr. Jacob Puliel through advocate Prashant Bhushan before the Supreme Court seeking its direction for transparency in clinical trial data for the vaccines being administered in India under emergency use. The petitioner, Dr. Puliel, also sought a stay on the vaccine mandates that are being issued by authorities in various parts of the country. The apex court asked the central government to respond to the petition filed by Dr. Puliel and posted the matter for hearing after four weeks. Prashant Bhushan told the Supreme Court that first time in history such kind of a practice took place without properly completing the vaccine trial. He also said that the Helsinki and World Health Organization mandated that all vaccine data and trials have to be made in a transparent manner, which in this case was not made. The clinical trial has to be completed, Bhushan said. A group calling itself the Nagaland State Unit of the All India Freedom Fighter and Successes Organization commemorated the 79 Quit India Movement in Kohima. Statement from the group on Monday stated that it observed the event on August 9, Monday, at its office at PR Hill in Kohima. Kikrovi Sakre, vice president of the group, said the day is observed every year on the 9th of August by the state's unit. The organization is not big. But during the past years, a number of attendees have observed the event. With the advent of the pandemic, their numbers have come down, especially the elderly, he added. Under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi, the Quit India movement was launched at the Bombay session of the All India Congress Committee on the 8th of August 1942 during World War II, demanding an end to British rule in India, the statement said. Sporadic small-scale violence took place around the country, and the British arrested tens of thousands of leaders, keeping them imprisoned until 1945, the group stated. Two minutes of silence was also observed to pay tributes to freedom fighters who sacrificed their lives for the motherland, the organization stated. That's all for the I. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.